In this presentation, we're going to show how to read data from a CSV, that is comma separated values file, in R and then make a plot from it. And at the end, we'll show you how to make a CSV file from an Excel file. In this first part, I'm going to assume that you already have a CSV file downloaded and somewhere on your computer. In R, we're going to need to know that file's path. So if you're on a Windows system, right click on the file and choose properties. When that file's properties dialog box pops up, find the location, highlight it, and then right click and copy it. I also give a link to a YouTube video on how to do the same thing on Mac OS. In line four then is shown, we're using the read.csv method. Its first argument is the path of the file that we are reading. So we take the location we just obtained previously. If it has backslashes, we turn them into forward slashes and we make sure that our path includes the name of the file. So you see it down there, fluiddata.csv. There was a slash before it and it should also include the file extension, the .csv. The second argument uh, says that our CSV file had headers. So if you look back, there were headers before there were any numbers. And so we're just letting the pro our program know that that is the case. And the third argument is a what we call a delimiter, what is used to separate one piece of data from the next in the file. And that was a comma, hence comma separated values. So we use the read.csv method to read in the file and take the results and put it into a variable we are calling fluid. And then in the next line, we are saying using the method called head with an argument of fluid. So this is spitting out the first several lines of the file that we read. This is important check and then we also executed this code. This is an important check that there's no use in going on with other steps in the program that rely on the data if we've not properly read in the data. If you were doing any program as we are here writing an R script and that program refers to another file, then you need the extension of that file. Windows systems tend to hide the file extensions, thinking users don't need to know them. So in the next couple of slides, I'm going to show you how to show the file extensions if you're in a Windows system. So one way to do it is through the control panel. So use the search and search for the control panel and click on the control panel. I'm going to show you how to do it using the icon view. So go over to the view by dropdown and choose either small or large icons. It doesn't matter. Next, find and click on the file explorer options icon. When the file explorer options dialog box pops up, go to the view tab, find the checkbox that says hide extensions for known file types and unselect it, make sure it's not checked and then click the apply button at the bottom. Recall that line shown at the bottom of this slide where we read in the data file using the read.csv method and it became fluid. Fluid is a data frame. That means it's a related set of vectors. And those vectors are have names. And the second argument of the read.csv method says that for now, those names are coming from whatever was in the header of the data file. Now it turns out that those names that were in the data file are sort of awkward to use within a, a programming context. And so I'm using the, the names method here to rename those, rename those fields, rename those the names of the vectors in the data frame fluid. So we have the method names fluid, and then uh, there were two names. So we're getting our names from a vector. So we have a little C there, it has two components 
and each one is a sort of I'm making up a new header, a new name for the vectors in fluid. And then I use the head method again to sort of spit out the results in the console. So when I run it, the the, the data is still the same, but I have these new and in my mind at least cleaner headers to use within code. We learned in a previous presentation how to plot and fit the data, but we'll do a quick reminder here. So we're doing using the plot method. We have five arguments here. We're plotting data that is in a fluid data frame. And then it had two fields, volume in milliliters and mass in grams. We're separating them by a comma. When we take that approach to plotting, then we want X first and Y second. So when we plot this, the volume is going to be on the X axis and the mass is going to be on the Y axis. The uh, argument that starts off main equals is titling the graph. The argument starting off X lab equals is giving us an X axis label. And the argument starting off y lab equals is giving us a y axis label. And here are the results over in the plot region. Next, we are going to do a fit, a regression, a trend line, a linear model. So R uses the linear model notation and its, its method for doing so is titled LM. So we're doing LM and then we want uh, the y's, then a tilde, then the x's. So our y's were mass and grams, so it's fluid dollar sign mass and grams, tilde fluid dollar sign volume in meters. So again, when we're doing the linear model, we use the tilde notation and the y's come first in the tilde notation. In the second line in 21, we're doing a summary of the linear model, the result of the linear model. So here are the results of the linear model. Down in the coefficient section, we see the intercept and slope, and they are uh, presented in scientific notation. So that 1.226e plus 02, that's 1.226 times 10 squared. We see that it gives other things in that uh, table, including this thing called PR. These are P values and it's giving an R squared. Uh, so giving us some nice uh, statistical measures along with the uh, best intercept and best slope. And here we're just looking at the, the same data plotted in Excel. And so you see the, the slope, the intercept, the R squared agreed with what was uh, found in R. So they're using the same approach to find the best fit doing the same statistical measures. And here we're showing the results of the analysis tool pack add-on available in Excel. And it again, its p-values agree with what R is giving. For a straight line, the fit line is easily added to the plot using the AB line method. It has a single argument, and that argument is the results of the linear model. Here we have four lines of code where we are extracting the intercept and slope from the uh, linear model. We are creating an equation uh, and then displaying that equation. So fluid underscore fit was the linear model. It had properties that were called coefficients, hence fluid underscore fit dollar sign coefficients. Coefficients was a, a vector or an array. It had multiple parts, and so the square brackets and the uh, indices in this case are named intercept uh, with parentheses around it or fluid dollar sign volume in milliliters. It's best to get these things from sort of copying and pasting from the summary so as not to misspell them. We're rounding the intercept and the fluid to three decimal places in this case. We are putting together uh, the text y equals, our slope number, the text x plus, and our intercept number, and pasting them together, gluing them together into a long string. And then we are going to put that string onto the equation using the text method. 
and we have arguments 35 and 180. 35 is an x value, sort of in the middle of the equation. The 180 is a y value, sort of in the middle of the equation. And fit underscore equation is the actual typed out equation. Recall that fluid is the data frame, and then it has fields which are named, and that in fact that we renamed. And so here we're showing that we can use those names for the X label and Y label. So previously we had X lab equals and we wrote something explicitly in quotes, but we can also use X lab equals names parentheses fluid square bracket two, for instance. So this said fluid was our data frame. Names are the names of the field. There is a, a vector or an array of names and then the X label in this case happened to be the second one, whereas the Y label happened to be the first one. Here we're going to show how if you have data in Excel and you want to turn it into a CSV file, how you do that. So if you have the data in Excel, you can go to click on file on the menu and choose save as. We're going to do two things in Save As. We're going to choose the type that we're going to Save As, and we're going to choose the location. So first, I, I'm working on the location, so I choose Browse to do that, and I sort of direct myself toward where I want this file saved. And then I go down to the Save As Type dropdown, and I find CSV in the list. Here's an exercise for you to carry out. Take the heart data found on the slide. It's the same as the first week of class. Copy it into Excel, then use that to convert it to a CSV file. Then write an R script that reads that CSV file and then uses the data to make a plot. Use a linear model to fit that data and then display the corresponding equation on the graph.